box on the box. And I'm saying that. Hey, what up, Sunny Side? It's your boy, Bushan. You know, we're doing something different during the uh, pandemic, and uh, we still want to stay in contact with our worshipers. And I have the opportunity today to actually bring a small little message. And uh, Lord, I thank you to, on today. And I praise your mighty name. And Lord, move me out the way and allow me to l- deliver this little small synopsis of a message so that your people could have peace during these times of trouble. And now that God has our attention, now he surely got my attention. I'm sure he has yours as well, because now we're all quarantining and uh, we're all being challenged. And the question is, how do we get out of the wilderness? Because the wilderness is associated with the Israelites when they were actually uh, removed from slavery from Pharaoh and God had to part the Red Sea. I'm sure most of us know the story, but they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. So what do we do during this time? Do we sit back and wonder or do we prepare? Because they say preparation prevents poor performance. Now, history repeats itself only when God's people turn away from God just and just, just rolls with the flow of the adversaries, meaning you're just rolling with the punches. You're doing what everybody else is doing. You're not stepping out and, you know, being a Christian. You're not being, you know, you're not going against the grain. You're basically just rolling with the flow of our adversaries, oppressors, stressors, and those who cause us harm and those who desire not to do the will of God. Now, one of the simple things that we have to understand as as Christians and as believers, God does have a will. He has a will for my life, your life, and everybody else's life. But to make it plain, we have to figure out what God's will is for us individually. But before we start uh, trying to figure out exactly his purpose for us individually, we have to understand what his intentions is for us as Christians. Now, as a Christian, in the book of Thessalonians, um, 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, verse 18 says, give thanks in all circumstances for God will, let me say this again, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. So God's will for us is to give thanks in all circumstances, no matter what the situation is, just like we're going through this trial right now. So I think we need to start giving thanks. You know, stop worrying about what's going on in our lives. Stop being so concerned about the news channels. And sometimes we just need to just take a break and just thank God. Because when, 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 when a human being says thank you, when a man says thank you or a woman says thank you, there's an immediate reaction or response in the normal realm. And in that normal realm, if somebody told me thank you, therefore, I would turn around and say, you're welcome. So if we're telling God thank you, we can only imagine the blessings that we receive from his you welcome because we got he we has uh, he has our attention and we letting him know that one of the things that's in his word that we are doing is basically thanking him in all of the circumstances because that is his word and you can never go wrong with that okay and it feels good like i said when i give my son something or my daughter something she turns around and she says thank you and the love that I have in response and admiration for my baby girl and my son, you're welcome. And is there anything else I could do for you? You know, but when you think and when you, you know, when you're doing things and you don't have the right mindset, you know, and the right intentions and your mind is not right. So that's when we begin to struggle as individuals because our mindset might not be on the wave of God, but it might be on the wrong wave. So we got to check ourselves and make sure that we're serving the right God, because the Bible says that there are many gods. Now, in these days and times, you know, we could use the benefit by hearing from God. We need a word from God. I know I, I've been l- trying to get a word from God recently because of what's going on, because I need this to make sense, you know. And wouldn't it be awesome to know that the word that you hear is coming directly from God? See, a lot of people, we believe, A lot of people believe, I believe it's going to happen. But sometimes when you know, when you know without a shadow of a doubt, that is the the game changer. 
Just like the confidence of somebody asked me if, if I know my name by birth certificate and if somebody told me that wasn't my name, I'm not going to argue and debate with these people to try to explain to them who I am because I know who I am. So we need to stop getting offended and being defensive when, peop when people that we know are lost because we might be lost with them. So therefore, we have to declare, we have to step our game up and make sure that we're on the right sheet of music because God is always in control. Now, in the scriptures, we're dealing with uh, the pandemic right now, and you could call it a curse, okay? Now, in the scriptures, now, a curse, because this, this is a curse. Now, the curse is the application of divine law that allows or brings judgments and to their consequences upon a thing, person, or people primarily because of unrighteousness. And I'm going to say that again, primarily because of unrighteousness. Now, if I told you we're suffering from this pandemic and we're, you know, losing our minds and going, things are going crazy, why? Because of we're being unrighteous. So if we could flip that, then therefore we must become righteous. Now, curses are, manifested, are manifestations of God's divine love and justice. Now, they may be invoked directly by God or pronounced by his authorized servants. Now, sometimes the full reason of the curses are only known to God. But in addition, a curse state is experienced by those who willingly disobey God. So as a nation, I'm sure we willingly disobey God because we can't even agree on anything as a nation. Because the Bible talks about being on one accord, but clearly as a nation, we are not on one accord because the Sadducees and the Pharisees clearly don't like one another. Now for God's people, it's time to uh, develop, manifest, or breed people of righteousness because unrighteousness is winning. Unrighteousness is winning the game. Now the game is not over, we got time. God's going to win in the end, but the unrighteousness is winning. So we're in the fourth quarter. The unrighteousness is up by 10, but we got to win this game. We know we're going to win it because why? We got God on our side, okay? We got God on our side. Now, the Lord may remove curses because of the individual, that's me, or the people, that's you, for their faith in Jesus Christ and the obedience to the laws and ordinance of the gospel. So what it looks like if we practice righteousness and if we start doing things the right way and praying and, and telling God thank you and saying thank you on, on a daily basis and, and, and a few hallelujahs, which, which is the highest praise, I believe we can start to shift the atmosphere because the positive energy must block out the negative energy. So when you look at the world and how it is today, sometimes the nation to get rich, you got to do some bad and cruel and evil things. You know, to be wealthy, you don't have to be honorable. You don't have to be a lover of God or a lover of man. You can just go out there and do your do, but death and jail may come. Now, when we go through these trials and we have to get out of these situations, it's, a clear, it's clear right now because I'm telling you, God's people going to have to show up and show out. I'm talking about now. Preparation prevents poor performance, and it's time to get to that next level right now. We cannot wander in the wilderness for the next 40 years. As a matter of fact, we shouldn't be wandering at all. We should be building for the next 40 years from where we are right now. But it's going to take some, the love of God and the love of, of, of those, those, those commandments that was broke down to two. Love God with all your heart, mind, and your soul, and then treat your neighbor as you treat yourself. But that's where sometimes the issue comes in because how can I love my neighbor as I love myself if I don't love myself? So self-love is the best love. We got to ask ourselves, do we really love ourselves? Because I could not do anything to anyone that I wouldn't want them to do to me. You know, but if, I'm, if I don't love myself, if I'm depressed, if I'm suicidal, you know, if I'll pull a trigger on myself, then therefore I may pull a trigger on somebody else. So we got to stay prayed up and make sure that we're doing, do, doing what we're supposed to do and sticking to, that, to, the, to the right source, and that's God. Okay? Now, to let you know that without a shadow of a doubt that God has issues with those who goes against him, 
you know, and you can find that in the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 37 through 39. Love the Lord your God with your heart and with all your soul. Now, this is the greatest commandment. And the second is like, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And like I aforementioned, some people don't even love themselves. So I think right now you have to look in that mirror and fall in love with yourself and thank Jesus for him creating who you are so you can become that individual that you are to become because everyone has a purpose. Now, in closing, now that God has our attention, how do we get out the wilderness? Now, we have our instructions from God in the midst of this storm. Now, if we don't prepare and strategize in the midst of the storm, then we won't be equipped to build when the storm is over. Now, we must move past the survival mode. See, a lot of times we just want to survive, but we have to move past the survival mode because when you truly love God, you know you're going to survive. You know it's, you're going, it's, it's going to be all right, but we have to move past survival mode. Now, if we believe, we must move past belief. Because we're living in a time where you have to be bold and you have to know who you are and who God is and who you belong to. Now, we must be proactive and not reactive. We must be positive and not negative. And we must be optimistic and not pessimistic. Why? Because this is what some of the mindset to some of the rudiments of God. And I say this because I know without a shadow of a doubt that those are at least three rudiments of the mindset of God. And I will add another rudiment to those three, and that's righteousness. Now, righteousness, righteous or righteous acts in the eyes of God will grant us rewards from God beyond measure. Now, we're being challenged by God to do his will. Now, this is a must. So we must know the mindset of God because the mindset is connected to his will, and his will is connected to him. So if we could connect to God's will, then we're in his will. So we're connected, living in safety, maneuvering through life without having to worry about what's going on in this earthly flesh. Now it's time for us to live peacefully amongst each other, seek righteousness at all times, and continue to introduce Jesus to a dying world. And I'll close with this. And it's in the book of Proverbs 18 and 13. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it, and that's what they are saying. And may God bless the word.